I mean, I'm listening to you and it's like, this, the, the biggest vocabulary of the word. And that's like, you're built like a truck stick. I'm like, where does he come up with that? <laughs> yeah. But it's the, yeah. that's what makes you Derek. That's why people yeah. love you so much and watch your videos because you got this, like, it's like, you're listening to a doctor. And then at the same time, he's like, So we have Derek more plates, more dates with us today. And I used to always call this guy plates for dates. And the first question I have is, did that bother you? Is that annoying? As annoying as my voice? What do you think um, about it? No, like I just thought at this point, I thought it was kind of part of your, uh, your uh, theme of like not pronouncing stuff correctly, <laughs> to be honest. Like I thought you kind of went out of your way to do it after a while, to be honest. So I was like, oh, that's just like the way he's saying it now. It's going to be like that forever. But uh, I didn't bother. <laughs> well, at, at first, literally, it was like, that's what I thought the channel was. Like in my brain, I'm like, mm. that's it. But after a while, I was like, I've said it so much that I almost liked it too much. And I'm like, I'm just going to keep doing it. So <laughs> yeah. if I do it now, it's because I want to. But before it yeah. was because I just didn't even know better. And when I pronounce uh, names wrong, like I'm literally not doing it on purpose. Like I'm trying really. my best. So people yeah. probably think that I'm like, it's just like a joke. Like when I say these names yeah. wrong, like Callan Von Mulger or all these guys, I literally just can't say names. Like I was a school like teacher. Hem, he, what's uh, the Hemsworth? You always say something. Chris Hemsworth? Uh, yeah, Is that was good. Hemsworth? <laughs> yeah, I that's think, what you used to say. Steve was like so mad. Like my brother, he's like, Greg, you need to stop doing this on purpose. I'm like, it's not on purpose. Like, I but don't know. He's like, it makes you look like an idiot though. I'm like, well, I'm not <laughs> trying. He's like, so he thinks it's funny. He thinks I'm thinking it's a joke or something. But literally, yeah. I'm just like... No, I just don't know better. I just suck that bad. Ashley K. Alt was er Ashley called was here. Going back, I first remember your channel. You had like thirty thousand subs, like way back, and I think we had the same sauna background back then. Oh, really? And yeah, I, yeah, literally. And I'm like, what is this channel? More plates, more dates. It's about <laughs> like getting girls when you work out. And I'm listening to the information. Like it sounds really good. Like the quality of the information is there, but I was so thrown off by the name of the channel. It's like, is he actually know what he's talking about? Like, I wasn't sure. Is that something you thought when you started listening to my channel? Like this guy sounds like an idiot, like screaming and shouting, but the information seems to be all right. Is there any similarity no. there? For well, for me, like you have the credibility of you know, like Greg, you said IFBB pro, like coach, blah blah blah. So, like, you go into your channel thinking it's high quality information, I feel like. Whereas for me, I've always sort of felt like perhaps I've been hindered in that I have to overly win somebody over who's a new subscriber to kind of ex realize that my information is high quality relative to what the you know initial perception of the name is. So I've like highly considered rebranding a, a few times to just like, I don't know, like more plates or something or just something entirely different. Um, but it's like, I'm in so deep at this point that I feel like it would not work. So like when I, when I see people in other industries outside the fitness industry, bring up my channel now, like sometimes it almost makes me think, I wish I had a more favorable name that gives a better impression of like the scientific content of my, of my channel rather than, you know, having to overly i almost feel like i have to make up for my channel name sometimes from like the way it comes across but at this point yeah i think i'm just you know i think most people who are going to find it have uh you know are kind of just on board regardless and i feel like it would be kind of weird if i rebranded at this point but yeah for you i never thought anything otherwise you know like for you you have the credibility behind your channel already from the get-go and i thought you had a very uh straightforward way of making it like layman's perspective to more people to understand, you know, because yeah, it looks like scientific related content. What, what's funny for me is that the IPB pro card, I always felt like it gave you almost like a, a PhD per se, because before I had that card, I knew the same information, but if I explained something, they were like, it's just Greg. And then I got the pro card and it was almost like all of a sudden I know something, but I know a lot of pros and I know that most yeah. pros know nothing. Like they're complete idiots. Yeah. They don't know about the PDs they're yeah. taking. They don't know why they're training or eating a certain way. They're just kind of like blind and just lucky and it's genetics. Like, what do you think about that? You must have talked to other pros. You find that they're, it's almost surprising how little they know. Like the first cycle I ever yeah. took, I knew more about the PDs than the people that were selling them to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I uh, have definitely, like when I first got into learning about this stuff, obviously you have the impression that, 
people who are, you know, superior physique development wise or whatever must know something you don't know, or they have some special technique in the gym or some diet hack or whatever it is. And in reality, it seems like the more genetically blessed they are, the less they actually delve into some of the more intricacies of things. And they just hyper respond to everything to the point where some of them don't know fucking anything, to be honest. And it's just like, it's very blatantly obvious in the way they speak that, you know, they don't even know how to interpret their blood work. They don't know how to design a protocol for, you know, fill in the blank sport or for, you know, whatever. Like when I see top pros that some of them are very intelligent, obviously, but a lot of them, when I see them coaching, I'm like, I'm thinking, even though you're a top pro, you probably have no business coaching other people because your hyper response to everything you do is not applicable to like 99% of other people. Yeah, my respect for your knowledge, it kept going up every through the months and the years, literally, because I've been following your channel since like that 30,000 zone. You had more followers than me even, and you'll probably get more by next year at some point because your trajectory is ridiculous, the views you're getting. But I remember thinking like, this guy knows, like he could literally be coaching pros how to do the cycles because it's like, that's so good, the information. So I kept getting more and more respect for your channel as the months went on, as I watched more videos. I remember messaging in private saying, are you coaching these pros? It was, who was that guy? Uh, the short guy. Um, oh, uh, from, Santi Aragon. Yes. I remember you yes. had done a video, but I was like, man, that's good information. He really knows what he's talking about. I was so impressed. I was writing it. And he's like, I'm just too busy. And I was like, okay, I get it now. Yeah. There's only so much you can do. There's so much time you have. So do you find you're like overwhelmed with work right now? Like, cause you're putting out <laughs> arguably, I don't know, maybe more videos than me around 14 a week. Like, how do you, measure like how do you balance doing that with everything else you're doing the supplements everything like it's so much and i know how much i work so i just can understand like you must be like morning till night i'm well yeah it is but i'm literally at the point where if you add one more thing to my plate it's just like everything else gets half-assed so for me like there's i'm not really managing it i i am but it's not like i'm doing anything exceptional in my time management rather i'm just going as hard as humanly possible to get two videos done a day is like my priority. I literally think to myself, if I don't get two videos filmed every single day, like I'm going to die. Like that's how I treat it. And then above and beyond that, the supplement stuff, the telemedicine stuff, fortunately in those aspects, I've gotten to a point where before I got to the two a day posting schedule, I had built up like a very, very strong team of people who can handle a lot of the more, uh, like day-to-day -day operations on the back end. So now I'm more of a big picture guy. I don't have to go in and manually reorder things and um, go into specifics with the manufacturers as much. Um, a lot of this stuff has been like, I, I don't even know how many employees I have at this point for Gorilla Mine and for Merrick Health. I know how many employees I have for like my YouTube specifically and more plates, more date stuff. But like the day-to-day, -day, sometimes I'll check in with um, Gorilla Mind, um, like our managers and whatnot. And then I'll be like, oh, wow, we have like six new people working there full time. Wow, like, cool. You know, like I, I had no idea. And it's just crazy how quickly it's expanding. But yeah, like I don't do, I'm more of just like formulation and overseeing big picture stuff, especially with like athlete sponsorships and whatnot too. Like I don't really do anything above and beyond that from day to day stuff now, except big picture stuff. And YouTube is the main thing. Because at the end of the day, you know, as well as I do, how much that drives everything you do comes from that even your ability to recruit people. If you're going to sponsor somebody like the fact that I have a following and built up this reputation disproportionately allows me to bring in athletes who want to work with me. So like for me, the YouTube is like two videos a day or else I die. And then everything else, as much as I can get done is what gets done. And oftentimes it doesn't get done, but it's as much as I can physically do. But so yeah, it's not really, it's not really balanced, but it's like, um, yeah, I work, uh, I would imagine, like, I would, I think I work probably like 12 hours a day. If I took out the time, I go to the gym, eat, but oftentimes, even when I'm at the gym and eating, I'm still kind of like sort of working in between that. I'll have one day a week where I typically do almost nothing, but I still have to go in and proofread the videos that are going to be up the next day. And I'll still be on call for like fires that need to be put out if something bad happens. Um, and sometimes it does, you know, if something, some big problematic thing happens, like I have to get on top of it, regardless if it's my day off, but yeah, like pretty much is, I don't know, like if I actually 
if I didn't count me eating or working out, I would say I'm working all week pretty much, except for maybe one day where I really try and go out of my way to not work very much. Yeah. yeah. There's never, I would say a day where I'm not working. I try to get certain amount of hours, like sometimes maybe eight hours where I'm not working, but it, even then you're thinking about work. And when it's done for the night, I'm done my work. I'll have my laptop on. I'm watching like 10 different videos, watching what's going on, looking for the next video that's ready to pop. Like I get, I, I you probably have people that you have, like they're looking for content for you, DMs, all this stuff. Like I have, I don't know, something like you're saying, like 20 employees. I don't know who I hire. I hire somebody who hires somebody and all of a sudden they're, they're new staff. I don't know, at least 20 employees, I think at this time, but it's overwhelming how much work there is to do. And it's never like time off. And people would say, well, your work, you count messaging people, you count yeah. videos and commenting. I'm like, how do you think I got a following in the first place? Cause I cared. Like until I had a yeah. hundred thousand followers, I read every comment. I read every DM. Yeah. Now I, I yeah. try to read a lot, but there's mostly the ones that, Kind of appear at the top but engaging with the audience and showing that you're actually interested i think that makes a big difference like what do you think about that like are you trying to like get out there and write and watch other people's videos or are you just like i got no time i haven't seen another video since six months ago um yeah so for me a lot of the content like curation of ideas comes from all right literally... hold up whoa, whoa, whoa curation of ideas that's a big word that's a big word. What does curation of ideas mean? Your vocabulary is so high. Like half the time I'm um, listening and I'm like, what is that word? Um, so it's like curation of ideas, <laughs> like collecting and organizing ideas kind of thing. Man, how did you get that vocabulary? I don't know. <laughs> You're just, just a like, smart dude. It's weird because I have a good vocabulary, but I also swear like crazy in some of my videos. I, I find that when, the... I'm, when I'm speaking about actual intellectual topics i often don't swear it's more when i'm doing reactions and just going off the top of my head and trying to be funny i end up swearing a lot but i don't actually speak that way necessarily as i do but also at the same time it's kind of weird how i have that fine line of very very i don't know eloquently speaking but then i have to speak like a like a trucker two seconds later i don't know yeah i mean i'm listening to you and it's like the, the the biggest vocabulary in the word and it's like you're built like a truck stick i'm like where does he come up with that <laughs> yeah. but it's the yeah. that's what makes you derek that's why people yeah. love you so much and watch your videos because you got this like it's like you're listening to a doctor and then at the same time he's like fucking truck stick and it's like what <laughs> like so it's such yeah. a relatable personality and like you're yeah. like you're smiling laughing in videos and it's not just like i'm gonna sound smarter than all of you and you do that the whole time it's like the smartness with the relatability, the entertainment. It's why we like the channel so much. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh, glad that I was able to have that come out because I was always, I've always been like that, but it's not like you get to that point until you've done like 700 videos, probably like for, for you, even you, everyone says, Oh, look at when Greg started his channel versus now, like obvious and me too, wildly different in terms of how we yeah, speak. Absolutely. Yeah. And I don't think it's just that we're trying to put on an act necessarily. It's that we're actually extremely comfortable in front of the camera now to the point where we can actually be ourselves and our humor comes out and different things off the cuff. You know, I used to literally read off of written articles I wrote as a script prior. That's how bad it was. Now I'm just like, you know. Yeah. And you, you already know about it really well. And you're confident enough that you can just say something and not mess up versus before you're like, well, I better write this out. And then yeah. you can see the videos with the, the screen prompter right there. And you can see they've planned the whole thing and it just, they read it out. And I'm like, yeah. people love that. Like, come on, like millions of you. I see some people and I'm like, they get millions of views. It almost bugs me. Cause I'm like, they don't, I don't even think they wrote the, the script. They're just the, one way the you can tell. It. The way you can tell we don't script our stuff is it would be physically impossible to put out two videos a day of any quality whatsoever if there was a script behind it. So that's how you know who actually knows what they're talking about a lot of the time, at least in my opinion. Like you can't, oh, definitely. Do, you can't do high frequency posting with like an elaborately written scientific paper and like reading off of it on a daily basis. That would be impossible. So you either know it and you post frequently or you don't and you post very infrequently and maybe it's high quality but that person posts like once every two weeks or three weeks or something. I, cause I recall very, very firmly when I was, it was like April, 2019, I had hired my first editor or something. 
And I was watching your channel go from maybe 5,000 subscribers up to about 20. And you had surpassed me at maybe like 25 to 30. I was like, wow, this guy's growing really fast. And, you know, he's starting to post really frequently, like once a day. I'm like, wow, yeah. that's crazy. Like, how how, the, how do you manage that? And then I was like, I got to try and get on that level. So I spent the next however many months trying to, you know, hire people to do, you know, a lot of the stuff you had already figured out, obviously. By the time I had gotten up to one a day, you were doing two a day. And I was like, this is, <laughs> this is impossible. I was like, this guy's an absolute freak of nature. I, I don't know, like, how he does it. And then after a while, I had outsourced enough things where I was thinking, like, okay, like, I, I clearly saw how it was not, the algorithm wasn't hurting you for posting more frequently. Like, you would still get over 100K views a video, regardless if it was twice a day. I truly thought people would get annoyed if we posted that much. And I was like, okay, like, whatever you got to do to get the two a day, like, this is what you need to do. So I spent a few months trying to, you know, hire out for certain things and get as much stuff off my plate as I can to get up to two a day. And then I got up to that and, you know, obviously dramatic change overnight, pretty much. But it's like your your actual inspiration to do that. Was that just you logically thinking like I need to do more? Because back in the day, somebody vlogging once daily or something would be like the pinnacle of frequency. So this is like a whole another echelon of posting. Well, honestly, I just thought. The people that are watching my videos, maybe only 40 to 50% are subscribers. The ones that aren't are not subscribers and they've never heard of me. And I was thinking, well, on Instagram, if I post twice a day, there's more likelihood that somebody's going to stumble onto something. And the more videos I produce, the more varied videos I can produce. So if I produce one a day, that's going to be better. So why not two a day? And I've literally been contemplating three a day. I'm not even kidding. I thought like, of that too. <laughs> I thought of that too. I was I like, do I was like what would the, I was like, what would that look like? And I was like, is that sustainable? I I don't know. That's like the borderline of me thinking I would I I would have to have everything outsourced to the point where I literally have like, I don't know, like a feeding tube and I'm just sitting here fucking. I'm close to videos. that right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. very close. I would just like the joke with me, just hire more staff, more staff, more staff all the time. But like yeah. my brother, I think, would 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 have be disowned. Like we'd have families to worry <laughs> about. Like it's just you yeah. can't do that much. But yeah. I mean, there, it comes a point of like dim, law of diminished returns, but I mean, we were going to do a sister channel. We're going to just do like coach Greg females, kind of like wow. Jeff Cavalier has a female only channel. And I was like, yeah, but then I got to build up that channel is different. Yeah. Why don't I just put them all on the same channel and just grow it from there? So I thought, yeah, that's probably the better play, but I 100% think that it's better to do two videos a day than one and it's varied content and I'm still trying to get new subscribers. For me, your channel is only as good as it's been in the last six months. People come and go and they're going to get sick of you, yes, but they're not going to watch every one of my videos. Like even your videos, who I watch more than anyone's, I only watch probably half, which is a lot. You go, oh, that's, that's about a one lot. a day. That is you a know? lot. So I'm yeah. watching a lot of your videos, but like people are like, Greg, these same videos, this is it. I'm like, there's 14, choose two a week and watch them. Yeah. And just, that's what everyone else is putting out. Two videos a week that if you like that, that's more than enough. So I don't care if you don't like this video about this boring topic. I'll talk about PDs, natural, losing weight, lifting in the gym, what I eat, something stupid, rapping like six, nine, five, six, all yeah. that stuff. Like, who cares? But people are very yeah. critical of like what kind of videos you're doing, which is annoying because I want to put out more science -y kind of videos, but then they don't get the views. I spend twice yeah. as much time on something and I get half the views. Yeah. Yeah. Like I noticed, uh, like even when I posted elaborate scientific content, I still do, but a lot of it comes in the format of reactions and stuff that I know is going to draw in more people, but because they come up less frequently proportionally to my overall posting schedule, People think I'm posting it less, but in reality, if you actually went back to me three years ago, I'd post one video every two weeks, three weeks or something. So it's like nowadays I post 14 videos a week. At least one of those is like high quality scientific information. So it's actually, I'm posting more scientific information than I used to. It's just like proportionally people don't really get that. And they get kind of annoyed if you do like a, a Sylvester Stallone video. And it's like, when you see that thing come up, you're like, this is. I got to cover it because it's going to score views, but like, it's not actually that useful to make a video about. And I'm sitting yeah. there recording it thinking like, like, I don't want, I don't even want to record this. Like, look at Stallone. He did this thing. Like, is it fake weights? Like, what do you think? Let me know. <laughs> 
Like I, it's a hundred percent true. The Stallone thing came up, and I, I have like people that give me content. You, Greg, you should do the Stallone video. I'm like, again, what's with this stuff? And then you put out the video. I put mine out the next day, and I watch yours before I even recorded mine. And I'm like, I can't believe this is getting this many views. It's now my most viral video by a mile. I have like yeah. one point one million views in like two weeks. I'm like. It took me six months to get a million views on any other video. This is in yeah. the two weeks. And I'm like, why? I literally just bent over and just pretended to lift the weights. Or like, it was just silly. But those I videos did, uh, get more more views. Yeah. So why are we not going to do them? I did a video on Chris Hemsworth calves. Yeah. His his calves. Because he he's wearing shorts and like he just didn't have a good angle. And that video got like 800,000 views in like a couple of weeks. And I'm just like... You cannot complain to me about lack of scientific content when you guys eat it up. Like, you know, yeah. So I watched that and I saw, I think you had like 300,000 views in like 12 hours. And I'm like telling Steve, I'm like, and people complain that we do these videos. Here's Chris Hemsworth's got no calves. And it's like, everyone wants to watch it. Or he could put a scientific explanation of what PD to take to target this, what, and no one watches it. But yet anything yeah. on some guy, and it's like everyone's eating it up. So they wonder why yeah. we do these videos. And to do those videos like trend, you got to kind of tie it in with a, the 14 year old took trend. And then it's like, okay, yeah. well, that's interesting now. Or this celebrity came out and admitted to being on HRT. Okay. Now I can do an HRT video, but I can't just say HRT explained the top five do's and don'ts. It's like, no one's yeah. watching that. Yeah. It's like, you got to make it almost like TV entertainment plus information simultaneously for it to be highly watched. It can't just be like, here's good information. Like watch it doesn't work like that anymore. speaking of like um videos and like we've gone we've done a lot is there any that you like regret having made like is there one video that sticks out in your mind that you're like oh man if i had a rewound time i you know if i was on hrt and i travel back in time <laughs> that is the video i'm not freaking doing again um because uh, i have i have over a thousand videos so it's hard for me to pick out one off the top of my head, that was like such a bad response that I would have not done any it. Um, serious dislikes, any videos that were the, the most disliked video. Can you think of any? If you can, it's a good sign. It means there's probably nothing bad. No, I think for me, it's more so when I put out not incorrect information and learned in the future something that made me look back on my, that video and be like, wow, that was stupid, you know? And then I'm just, you know, it's had like 100,000 views and a lot of people think, like, wow, Derek, so insightful. And there's like a lot of it's because in general, if me or you say something, like people in general will think it's correct, which is, you know, how like realistically how a lot of these, not, not that we're doctors, of course, but how a lot of these doctors, anything they say, if they're seen as an expert on YouTube, it's like gospel, even though it's totally incorrect. So like when I think back to some of the stuff that I've learned is incorrect over the years, I think, you know, I cringe thinking of the stuff I said so confidently at the time that I now think is totally wrong. But off the like, so I can think of probably like, I don't know, a handful of videos plus at least more than a handful that, you know, I would go back and redo if I could, but there's none off the top of my head that stick out. It was like one video that was so bad. Um, I don't know, like some of my old Natty or Not videos that are my highest watched ones. I listen to those and I think of how bad I was at speaking. And I think I would love to redo those, but I've already posted them and they're already at the, you know, 1 million plus mark. So I'm not going to, but those are like, some of them are very, the like to dislike ratio is clearly not as much in my favor because I don't know, I was, no one knew of me at the time. And it was like something that got pushed to an audience that had never heard of me. Like most people who saw it had never heard of my stuff. And I was just not very good at speaking. So it came across as boring and, not as well thought out, I guess, just by my lack of confidence in speaking, perhaps. But the video still got pushed to all those people. So it gave a bit of a, a perception I wouldn't like around my channel as much. But I don't know. There's nothing I can think of off the top of my head that was like really, really bad, to be honest. Next time on Coach Greg. Okay, me and everyone in the world, we want to know, what is this sauna background what is the scoop <laughs> what is the deal you need to tell us this the people want to know and what is it exactly um interestingly enough enough oh you, you clicked the you did this